If you've shopped around for calligraphy brush pens, I'm sure you've run into Pentel Sign brush pens and Tombow Fudeno Suke brush pens, but they're so similar it can be hard to pick between the two. So in this video, I'm going to do a comparison of the Pentel and Tombow brush pens and talk about some important differences between the two. I have and love using both the Pentels and the Tombows, and I have for years, so I'm going to show you how they work and also share my opinions about which work best for what purpose. So I'll talk about size, colors, ease of use, transitions, which is important if you're using them for calligraphy, blending capabilities, and I'll also talk a bit about bleed through and ink permanence. So first of all, I have here the Pentel brush sign pens. Now, if you're looking at these, make sure they have the flexible brush tip and not the felt tip pens. The package should say something like flexible point on it. So I have a set of 12 colors and they also come in another set of 12 unique colors besides these, or you can get all the lovely colors in a set of 24. Then I also have the Tombow Fudeno Suke brush pens. I have the 10 pack colored set as well as the two black pens that come in their popular two pack. They also come in neon colors and pastel colors, but I have not tried either of those yet. So one really important thing about the Tombow Fudeno Suke pens is that they come in two different kinds of brush tips. There are the soft tips, which are softer and more flexible, and then there are the hard tips, which are firmer. Now, the hard tips are my personal favorite for calligraphy, and they're popular with other lettering artists I know, but it's totally a matter of preference. So the two pack of Tombow pens that you'll see recommended everywhere has one black hard tip pen and one black soft tip pen. And then the colored set has only hard tip pens. So hopefully that wasn't confusing. If you want to try the soft tip and hard tip pen, grab the two pack. And if you just want to try the hard tips, the colored pack is a great option. So first of all, let's talk about size. So these are the thickest and thinnest lines I can get with the Pentel brush pens. They're small brush pens, so this is what the writing size is like if you're using these pens for lettering. The Tombow pens are almost the exact same size. Now, of course, some pens can tend to feel a little softer or firmer than others just because that's how brush pens are. This black hard tip Tombow pen, which has the silver accents on the pen barrel, feels firmer, so the thick line is just slightly less thick. The soft tip has gold accents on the barrel, and that's how you can tell them apart. So the soft tip gives you a slightly thicker line because it's just a little bit more flexible than the others and feels a lot softer as I use it and this one feels particularly soft to me. Overall, the size of the Pentels versus the Tombows is pretty much the same. The Tombow hard tip pens are just slightly smaller than the Pentel pens. Next, let's look at colors. I'm just going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Pentel and the Tombow colors. Now, obviously, the Pentel set has two more colors than the Tombow set does, but both sets cover the same range of basic colors that you would expect in a set of markers. The Pentel pen colors are noticeably more vibrant and saturated than the Tombow colors. The Pentel pens are really juicy and smooth and the colors are vibrant and that's why they're so much fun to use. The Tombow pens are drier, so they're definitely not as juicy. One thing is that the gray in the Pentel set is darker than the one in the Tombow set. So I actually prefer a lighter gray because I can use it for adding shadows. So if you're mostly concerned about colors, the Pentel pens are a clear winner in this category. Next, let's talk about ease of use. And what I mean by this is how easy are the pens to use for calligraphy lettering? Because while you can, of course, use these pens for illustration or other purposes, they're widely recommended and used for calligraphy specifically and especially for calligraphy beginners. So ease of use is especially important to look at because it's a bit of a learning curve and the brush pen should not be making it harder. 
So things like, how does it feel when you adjust pressure? Does it write smoothly? How easy is it to write letters with the pen? The last thing you want is for a pen to feel frustrating to use or make you feel like your writing is messy even though you're trying really hard to keep it neat. So the Pentel pen, it writes very smoothly. One thing I love about these pens is how they glide on the smooth paper. And by the way, it's best to use either of these pens on smooth paper if possible. They feel almost buttery smooth and that's why they're so enjoyable to use. The hard tip Tombow pen is firmer, so it feels stiffer compared to the Pentel. And while that might sound like a negative thing and it might not feel as smooth as the Pentel, it's actually a benefit when you're using it to do calligraphy. Because the tip is firm, it's not at all floppy, which makes it much easier to control. This soft tip pen is more floppy, so it's harder to control as far as these three pens go. It feels mushier than the hard tip and you have to work harder at controlling the pressure and the strokes. When you're doing calligraphy, typically you want to go much slower, but I also want to see how the pens perform when I'm not going super slow and trying really hard to keep it neat. So you can get nice, neat writing with any of these pens, but the Tombow Soft Tip and the Pentel pens will be a little bit harder to control. Now, part of ease of use is transitions. So all these transitions along the bottom here and also up at the top are all examples of where I'm transitioning between thick and thin lines. Transitioning smoothly is one of the trickiest things about doing calligraphy and the pen you use is a big factor. The one shape that will really tell us what the transitions are like is the oval. So let's do some ovals with the Pentel pen. And then I'll do some with the Tombow hard tip. The difference here is subtle, but if you look up close, you can see here in the two transition areas, it's smooth. Up here with the Pentel, they're mostly smooth, but there are some spots where the transition is kind of pointed or uneven compared to the ones with the Tombow. Now I'm going to do a different comparison. So first I'll write this word and I'll put effort into keeping it neat and trying to keep the transitions really smooth. Then I'll write the word again, but this time I'll go faster and I won't put much effort into controlling the pen. Right here it's kind of sharp instead of smooth. And then this is what I really notice about these Pentel pens. See how some of the thickness here kind of got dragged up into the line that's supposed to be thin? Now this is subtle, but the fact is that with the Pentel pens, if you get it all lazy about controlling the pen, it will show. It's just something to be aware of. And again, this is just a calligraphy lettering thing. Now I'll do the same thing with the Tombow hard tip pen. Okay, so here's a great example. With the second word where I went fast and let myself get lazy about pen control, the transitions are still all pretty smooth. I mean, the worst thing that happened was that some of the lines here got extra thin, and if that happens, you can easily draw over them again. Obviously, the word overall doesn't look quite as neat as the first one, but the transitions still look great. So that's the cool thing about these Tombow hard tips, and that's why I love them, because they're so forgiving. Even if you get lazy, because the pen tips are so firm, they kind of correct those errors for you, which is super cool. Just for a quick comparison, I'll also do this with the Tombow soft tip. So the soft tip kind of has the same problem as the Pentel, where if you get it all lazy, the transitions will get messy, but it still does great looking lettering. And the soft tip gives you a whole different look with those thicker strokes, which I really like.
When I was testing a calligraphy workbook that I finished recently, I was using the Tombow hard tip and then I decided to switch to the Pentel to test the worksheets with that pen. And I was immediately like, whoa, this is not the same. And even though I've been doing calligraphy for years, I was still having a bit of a hard time getting the strokes to be neat and I was actually getting kind of frustrated. And they aren't as easy to use when you're a beginner and you're trying to carefully follow worksheets. So now I only recommend the Tombow hard tip pens for anyone getting started with calligraphy because they're just the best. Which by the way, if you want to start doing calligraphy, I'll leave some links in the description where you can get that workbook if you're interested. So do you see how the Pentel tip flexes quite a bit? While well, the Tombow pen tip is very firm and crisp, the Tombow does not flex as much. Just to be clear, there's nothing wrong with the Pentel pens being a little softer. I love the Pentel pens and they're a lot of fun to use, but if you're new to calligraphy, the Tombow Fudeno Suke hard tip pens are much easier to control and that makes a big difference when you're new to using brush pens. The last thing I want to show you is blending capabilities. And this is another important distinction between these two pens. So the Pentel Sign brush pens have what they call water soluble ink. And this means that you can blend the colors with water, almost just like watercolor. Now with the Tombow Fudenosuke pens, you can't do this. I can activate just a little bit of that color, but for the most part, that ink is staying there. These pens have what the Tombow website calls water-based pigment, so the ink is more permanent than the Pentel pens, and it's basically waterproof. With the Pentel pens, you can just activate the ink with water and basically paint with it. The ink is wet and richly saturated, and you can blend the pen colors together. You can blend the colors with water. You can dilute the color of the pen with water if you want to. You can even dip the tips in watercolor ink. With the black Tombow pens, I can try to activate the ink with water, but all I get is a bit of gray. So as far as permanence goes, the Tombows definitely win. Now, Pentel also does make some of these pens with a more permanent pigment-based ink. I have not tried one of those yet, but I will put a link in the description if you want to check out that option. So the blending capabilities can be a pro or a con depending on what you're using the pens for. If you want to have fun with colorful blending and illustrations, the Pentel pens are for you. But if you want your lettering to be more permanent and not to be damaged by water, then the Tombows are the best option. I write on envelopes with my Tombow pens, but I would not do that with these Pentel pens because it can get washed out. One more thing is bleed through. So because the Pentel pens are so juicy, they are much more likely to bleed through really thin paper. Now, they're not bleeding through this paper, which is fairly thin marker paper, but if you were to do a lot of wet layers, they might bleed through. The Tombow pens are typically drier and less saturated, so you shouldn't have much of a problem with bleed through. Although the black pens, when they're brand new, are pretty juicy. So both of these pens are great for different purposes. If you're getting started with calligraphy lettering, I suggest starting with the Tombow Fudenosuke pens, and then once you get more comfortable, you can try the Pentel pens if you want to. But the Pentel pens are better if you want to do color blending or get watercolor effects, or if you just want a smooth, juicy, colorful pen to write with. So if you have been looking for an honest review of the Pentel versus the Tombow brush pens, I hope this was helpful and that now you understand exactly what the differences are and which pen would be best for your project. And let me know in the comments below whether or not you've used these pens and which one is your favorite.